There's a lot of different ways you can use this. And I think a lot of people, they focus on techniques, but some of these like small ideas kind of exist between the techniques, right? So it's the idea of what I just call push-pull, okay? And if you've never trained before and you heard of judo, it's like people always say, oh, you use their force against them. Has anyone ever heard someone say that before? No, yes. maybe not, okay. People say that. Before I trained uh, any martial art, people always say, is that the one you use their force against them? And then when you train, you kind of lose sight of that, but it's actually incredibly powerful, right? So, so the basic idea, we're just gonna try it with just a collar pull, okay? If he's here, just kind of be strong and, and resist. Yeah, see if I pull, just kind of lean back. Yeah, see, it's hard to pull him, right? So if I'm here and I just push a little bit and I feel any resistance back towards me at all, like that, when I pull, it's gonna rip him forward, right? If I'm here and I pull and he's leaning back and I push, it's gonna be very dramatic, okay? Now, you don't need a ton of force for them to be, uh, to be able to make this effective. Really, like if you think about it, if they're resisting, then when you pull, there's like a negative force against you. So let's just say, I'm gonna make up arbitrary numbers, but let's say they're at negative 50 backwards, okay? And you pull 50 forward, that's a net of zero, okay? So if you feel any pressure forward, that's a 50 point difference, right? Because if they're negative 50, if you feel anything forward, even if they're a positive 10, now you're at 60 instead of zero. Does that make sense? So this is such a simple concept and you can use it a million different ways, right? If I'm here and I have like double sleeve and I try to like push a little and I feel his hip come back into me at all, that's gonna be dramatic. If I try to pull him overhead and he resists back a little bit, right? Then all of a sudden you get a lot of force backwards. So when you do stuff like this, it can create like when someone watches me roll, it may look like I'm really explosive or really fast, and it's, it's not the case. It's just that I'm timing it well, okay? So just as a practice, just get with your partner and just like, uh, just kind of have your hands like this. Yeah, okay. And see, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push, and then when you feel the resistance back, rip. Okay, when you pull a little and you feel resistance, push. Try to, just try to get a sensitivity for that, okay? After that, we're gonna go into how you can use this in double sleeve, collar sleeve, in a lot of different ways. Make sense? All right, guys, let's go. One, two, three. Tons of different ways we can use this. So the first one we're gonna do is just gonna be a loop choke. So go on both knees. So you could do this literally if you just had the collar. One I like to do all the time is I'll get collar sleeve and have a foot on the hip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push into him a little bit, right? And again, the trick with using push-pull is not to over push or over pull, right? I'm not, I don't need a ton of force for him to make this work, right? I just need enough because when he resists, then he goes from like I described before, like 50 to zero. That's most of your gain is gonna be from the 50 to zero. It's not gonna be his weight coming into you. It's that the fact that he's coming into me means there's zero resistance. Does that make sense? Okay. So if I over push, the guy starts to understand, oh, he's probably gonna pull, right? But if I just do barely anything and I sense any pull, it's gonna be dramatic. Okay, so a lot of times I can have a collar here like this or something, and I just push, and then I pull into the loop choke. You see that, right? So here you could just have one foot on the hip or something. I'm here, I just press a little, pull right into the loop choke. Make sense? Okay, so you guys can play with that. You don't have to do it from collar sleeve. You could just be here like this, pressing, pull right into a loop choke. Make sense? All right, let's give it a try. One, two, three, right? So another really practical, easy way you can use this is for an arm drag, okay? Uh, this is really popular no-gi, but still works great gi. I still use it all the time. So basically, you're going to be in the grip five phase. Maybe you like to play sleeve control as you're looking for this. So one thing I'll do sometimes is I just grab the wrist. You could do the sleeve. Wrist is a little better. And usually when you're grip fighting, if I do this, I'll, I'll actually, what I'll do is I push away. And of course, it doesn't always happen. Like sometimes he may just pull his arm away and I may go to the collar. But we're here, and if I just push, yeah, see if like he's here and I just push this away, he's gonna try to come back in maybe to grab my lapel or something, right? So now when, he, when I grab here and I just feel any push, I can drag him into an arm drag. You see that? Yeah, it's super fast, right? So, um, not, so what I'm doing is I'm pu I pull, and then I'm connecting to this, so just go super slow. So I'm gonna go here, and then this, see this massive overextends. I catch here, and I like to kick the knee out if I can, because that adds like an extra layer of flop, right? Then what I wanna do is immediately connect my chest to the back, right? Remember guys, same bolo, crab ride, whatever. Once you connect your chest to the back, he can never get his back to the floor. Now if he tries to like roll over his right shoulder or something, it's like I'm already connected onto the back, right? If I catch here, right, and I lock in, and he starts trying to stand up, 
see I'm following on the back. That's what you want to do, lock the chest to the back, right? So we're here one more time, right like this, boom, here, see? Boom, right there, catch the hip, lock in. Make sense? Yep, right, even if he's standing, go ahead and stand up. Right, you can be here like this, I'm grip fighting, I do that, see? Boom, like that. Cool. All right, guys, let's try it. One, two, three. Guys, just a couple other thoughts here about the arm drag. Just Ben, he has his hands up, right? I'm moving around, I press it away. Maybe he's trying to grab the lapel or something, and I use that to pull. Make sure you kick the leg out, right? Especially if they're standing, so go up. We'll go really slow, right? When you hit the arm, uh, just, you don't even do that for now. But when I gra drag this, it's, it's hard to pull him down. But when I kick the leg out at the same time, that's what breaks the posture to make it hit. So you really have to time that right to be able to get that. Right, so again, he's up here, I push a little bit, I feel the hand come back in, and that's when I pull. Right, big idea, so just go right here, perfect. Right, once you create the pull and the arms pass, you just wanna latch your chest to the back somewhere, right? Like I always talk about, if you can get your chest in the back, just follow that like your compass. Now, it depends on how he is. Sometimes maybe I could be all the way on the upper back, but if somehow he was slightly more turned away and locking in on the low back as possible, that's totally fine too for now. Because you see, once I'm here like this, say even glue my ear, I'm attached to the back. So now if he starts standing up, so standing up, you see, I'm, gonna, I'm either gonna follow, pull him down or try to stand all the way up if you can, right? Or I'm gonna literally follow him all the way up, but I'm attached to the back. If you get focused on anything else, like where's my hand grip go, or where's this, where's that, and you lose sight of this, you can have all these hand grips, right? And then he turns towards me with his upper, see, and he slips out like that. So you have to make sure whenever you're doing some form of a back take, whether it's a crab ride or whatever, you're just trying to get the chest to the back. And if you follow that, like if I'm like this and he rolls over his right shoulder, you see my body is still under him, right? That's all back taking is. All the other leg positions can vary. Just keep the chest to the back. Okay, so let's look at another version of this push-pull. So go up. So now we're gonna be in double sleeve, right? So I'm gonna be here like this. So anytime the guy's just kind of static here and I can't quite get movement, I just start creating kind of momentum. So let's say I'm here and I can't get any movement. I could push with my daily heba hook a little bit like this. And usually they'll kind of do that, right? And then you see, I can start creating that overhead. So then he resists back, you see? And then now I start extending him. Then I start going this way a little bit, right? Let's go back. So here I start pushing the daily heba hook that way and he's gonna lean that way a bit, you see? That's how you start creating movement. If you just sit there and you try to do the sweep in isolation, right, then it's, they're very static. But it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't take any pressure at all. You don't need some dramatic over push from the guy. You just need a hair of movement. And that's enough to eliminate all resistance, okay? Just to reiterate again, the purpose of the push-pull is not because they're gonna push so much you, that, that gives you all the force. It's just that any amount of, of push or opposite force means zero resistance, right? So I'm here, right? If I already have the foot on the hip, a really obvious one is I can push. If I feel any resistance, I go overhead, right? Or I pull and then I can push back. But even when my leg is trapped here, right? See, I just try to pull a little and he resists back. Like, don't let me take you, yeah. See, now look, I start getting momentum there, right? See how easy that is to use? So I want you guys to feel, sorry. Right. I, want you, I want you guys to feel how you can time that because I think that's a missing link for a lot of people playing positions. They're just doing the position, but they're removing kind of the finesse of it, right? This is something that I think judo is exclusively this. Jiu-jitsu is way more systemized and position oriented, whereas, I mean, I'm not that good at judo, but it, it seems like to me that it's way more oriented on the timing and the movement than it is the exact system of the, of the technique. Right, Max? Max agrees, okay. All right, guys, so let's just play around with the double sleeve and the off balances there. All right, let's go, what are they? Just a couple more thoughts with the overhead sweeps here uh, and the push-pull in general. So one way I push-pull a lot, go on that side, Robin, sorry, I'm gonna show this. Uh, one way I push-pull a lot here is I don't just push first with the left foot, I can pull, right? So if, if I feel like for some reason pushing doesn't make sense, I can just start with a light pull. And as soon as, see, that already starts creating that. So you have to try different ways. Another one is like when this foot can't be on the hip, just having this leg past the body. So I push a little and then see I kick my shin like straight up into the armpit and overhead and that creates overhead off balance. 
a big thing for you guys in general with overhead sweeps is the ability to cut this arm out. So watch what I do here. Like I might start like this, I pull a little, I push, and then I start going here, and see as he steps forward with his leg, you see I block that. And it creates this really easy sweep. It's crazy because when you do it, it's extremely explosive looking, so it looks like a ton of force, but it's more like you just made someone step forward and just put a bar at their feet and they trip over it. It's actually no force for me at all, but it looks extremely dramatic when I do it. It's the same thing with like the double sleeve butterfly sweeps, right? So I might be here like this, I pull, and you get those beautiful overhead sweeps, right? Even like, uh, like if I do the double sleeve butterfly, like sometimes I'll just be here, right, like this, and I pull, you see? And you get that really nice flick. So you wanna master that ability, right? Especially if you play double sleeve all the time because they can't grab anything. You control where their hands go. It's very easy to hit these sweeps, okay? So let's just play with that just a little bit longer and then I'm gonna let you guys free train. All right, any questions? Can you show again the first sweep? Which one? Ah, uh, the, yeah. Uh, so we're here like this. I got the daily heave hook, right? So maybe I start by pushing a little, right? And then I pull, and you see I just use the shin in the armpit, and I'm pulling up here, and I just block that guy out. See, I'm letting him post there, but I, like that. Make sense? All right, let's go. One, two, three. 